So welcome to Real Classic Film Reviews and welcome to The Greatest Movie Years. Now this is a series where we travel back in time uh, to cast a spotlight of sorts on a specific year in movies. Uh, right here we're going to look at 1974. Uh, this is the first video in what will hopefully be a series so uh, bear with me and uh, the fast and loose structure but let's give it a go. Now 1974 is widely considered one of cinema's greatest years. Uh, Coppola released The Godfather Part 2 and The Conversation. Uh, Jacques Rivette bent audiences' minds with Celine and Julie Go Boating, and Polanski peaked with Chinatown. Um, and those films alone will probably top any year's list, but there's much, much more. Now, 74 was a messy year in terms of real life away from the silver screen. Uh, Nixon announced his resignation over the Watergate scandal this year. And over here in the UK, uh, miners' strikes sent the government into disarray and a three-day working week was introduced. Um, the IRA killed nearly 50 people that year, injuring hundreds more after um, a spate of bombings. But in the US, Happy Days premiered on TV and McDonald's opened its first restaurant in the UK. So it's not all bad. Now we'll get to some of those cinematic big hitters in a few moments, but let's take a moment to appreciate some of the movies from this year that haven't aged um, as well in the last five decades. Uh, because of course, this was the year that Sean Connery, uh, between excellent thrillers like The Anderson Tapes, um, The Offence and Ransom, uh, decides to wear a nappy in John Borman's ill-advised trip into sci-fi with Zardoz. And although 1974 would be an amazing year for the disaster movie, uh, arguably reaching its zenith with uh, Irwin Allen's towering Inferno and the UK's own uh, daft but well-meaning juggernaut, unfortunately it also gave us Airport 75 and Earthquake, uh, both starring Charlton Heston and both um, a bit of a slog to get through in all honesty. Now, whilst Sean Connery was dressed like a sci-fi baby, uh, Roger Moore was easing nicely into his James Bond character with his second outing as 007 um, in The Man with the Golden Gun. Now, not one of the franchise's strongest outings for me personally, but one that scores points for starring Christopher Lee as the main villain and for having Britt Eklund only wearing this for the entire final act. Now, the summer blockbuster season uh, didn't exist here as it does today. Uh, Jaws would come and change all of that a year later, so... During June, July and August here, a whole wild variety of films were released. Now, Michael Winner kicked off a new franchise here with the still nasty first entry in the Death Wish franchise. And I think five were made in the end. And Alan J. Pakula's The Parallax View, uh, one of the great paranoid thrillers of any decade, had Warren Beatty wrapped up in a vast conspiracy after a political assassination. Uh, Sam Peckinpah's bonkers cult classic, Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, was released. It's a shame this film didn't get a release until the December of that year because it's one of the sweatiest, stickiest movies I've ever seen. Now, not content with having a plethora of great thrillers, uh, 1974 also gave us two of the greatest comedies ever made um, in the eternally un-PC one-two punch of Blazing Saddles and Young Frankenstein, both written by Mel Brooks and starring Gene Wilder. Now, if you've never seen either of these films, uh, certainly Blazing Saddles, uh, and you're the kind of person who will convince yourself that you're offended before taking to social media to complain about it then please don't watch these but if that's not the case then please enjoy one of the great comedies um one that's happy to call us out on how silly and ignorant we are uh, while spending five minutes listening to fart gags now incidentally both films were a couple of the highest grossing films of 1974 and i'll stand corrected but i think blazing saddles might have been the highest grossing u.s film of that year now imagine a year where a western comedy is the highest grossing film of the year now, I have touched on a couple of these films already, but The Summer of 74 brought us one of the greatest American movies ever made in Roman Polanski's crime thriller epic Chinatown. Um, a film so well acted and grand in scope that it surely would clean up at the Oscars. Uh, well, that probably would have been the case, but for a little-known filmmaker named Francis Ford Coppola, uh, not content with already having his Gene Hackman thriller The Conversation come out earlier in the year, and seriously, as time goes by, that film gets better and better, but the December saw the release of The Godfather Part 2, uh, which is nothing short of one of the greatest films ever made uh, and the movie that would crush the following year's Oscars, winning seven major awards. So the disaster movie wave crested in 1974 with the release of The Towering Inferno, the Steve McQueen, Paul Newman skyscraper on fire epic that pretty much closed the curtain on the genre until it was revived again in the 90s. It's still arguably the best example of the disaster genre. Now, speaking of genre films, 1973 
featured both The Exorcist and Don't Look Now, uh, both excellent horror movies, both well directed by William Friedkin and Nicholas Rogue, respectively, with top tier casts Max von Sydow, um, Ellen Burstyn, Donald Sutherland, Julie Christie. But 1974 brought a young upstart by the name of Toby Hooper, a low budget and a bunch of unknowns and a chainsaw and changed horror movies for the next 50 years, uh, banned outright in several countries on release and unavailable in the UK until the 90s. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a poster child for the video nasties calamity, um, along with stuff like The Driller Killer and I Spit on Your Grave. Now, God bless Mary Whitehouse, uh, arriving on the scene to save us from moral depravity uh, and send all these horror movies straight back to hell. Uh, that whole thing's for another video entirely, but suffice to say, you can pick any episode of uh, The Walking Dead or Game of Thrones or whatever, and it would feature more depravity than a dozen video nasties. Now, I mean, for the sheer sake of time, we can't go into detail about every movie made in 1974. But before we finish up, I'll just list some other notable mentions. I mean, check these films out. Ronald Neem's excellent thriller, The Odessa File. Uh, Sidney Pollock's The Yakuza. Sidney Lumet's adaptation of Murder on the Orient Express. Uh, John Carpenter's Dark Star. Uh, the original Taking of Pelham 123. The original Scent of a Woman. So many great films. So before we go, I do have to mention a mostly forgotten about movie that came out this year called The Sugarland Express. Um, a few years after his TV movie debut with Jewel, um, a 28-year-old filmmaker named Steven Spielberg released this crime drama about a young Goldie Hawn fleeing across Texas with a police officer as a hostage. Um, it's good, but not a great movie. But a promising start to one of the greatest careers in the history of movies. Uh, notable, if anything, for being the first collaboration between Steven Spielberg and composer John Williams. Um, a collaboration that would pretty much change the course of cinema history only 14 months later with 1975's Jaws. Spider, you son of a... <laughs> so guys, what are your favourite films from 1974? Has there been a better year for cinema? Tell me about it in the comments. Subscribe to stay up to date with future videos and click that like button if you like this kind of video and click the dislike button if you don't. It's all good. Thanks for watching. <laughs>